Okay, so once you've established what the concrete surface profile requirement is, it's time to look at your concrete, make sure that you understand what the, what the individual characteristics of that concrete are and how you're going to achieve that CSP1 or 2 or 3. But to start with, we're going to do the CSP1 with traditional techniques. We have a product called E-Etch that we're going to show you how to use. We're also going to show you the acid etching and, and pressure washing technique along with the neutralization process. And then we'll get into some more aggressive profiling of the concrete. Next thing we're going to show you is proper acid etching techniques. Okay? It's very important when you acid etch to use proper safety precautions. Okay? Eye goggles, uh, some, sometimes if you're inside you may need a respirator to keep the fumes out of your lungs. And, and gloves, okay, and always keep a source of water by it, okay, because acid, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an acid and it's going to burn you, so you want to use common sense and, and be smart about using acid. In this pail, I've measured out five gallons of water and I'm using my, uh, my muriatic acid or hydrochloric acid, it's the same thing, and I've measured out two quarts. So I've got five gallons of water, two quarts, we're going to use approximately a one part acid to ten parts water to just burn the cream off of the surface of the concrete that we're wanting to either uh, uh, use a water-based stain on or in extreme cases an acid stain. It's not something we normally recommend for surface prep with an acid stain because they, the acid, the hydrochloric acid will actually take away what, a, what an acid stain likes to work with. So only in extreme cases do we recommend using an acid wash for an acid stain job. But for a water-based stain job, absolutely. Um, for uh, your freestyle, your sem coat, uh, in some instances it's uh, applicable for microtop, uh, your SM Pro, and your stampable overlays. Okay? Sometimes you need to use more than one part acid to ten parts water. If you have a very tightly troweled surface and you can't get in there with a grinder, sometimes an acid wash is acceptable. Acid washes are okay as long as they are done properly. And part of that uh, means using proper safety precautions, using proper acid to water ratios, and then also neutralizing the surface. Okay? In here we've got another five gallons of water and we're going to use one one pound box of Arm & Hammer baking soda or it doesn't have to be Arm & Hammer but any type of baking soda, we're going to mix that in here and this is going to effectively neutralize the surface once we've uh, made it acidic with the acid bath. Over here, again, you have five gallons of water, two quarts of acid, and always add your acid to the water. If you add water to acid, it can splash around in the pail and come up and splash it. Now you can see we have a small slab in the middle of uh, a lot of the slabs that we do during training but this slab was poured with a broom finish on it, okay and it had some color in it and it doesn't look very nice so what we're going to do is we're going to prep it for a coating okay we're going to put our SM Pro over the top of this now you can see that when some of these slabs were sprayed with sealer we have a mist of sealer around the outside ring that's something that will have to grind off okay the muriatic acid will not touch anything with sealer on it. Okay? You'll see when I put this muriatic acid solution down here that it will not hurt the sealed surface. That sealer protects the concrete from, uh, from anything uh, getting down on the surface. So you can see all these slabs that we've done during our training courses. They're nice and clean and dry. Um, but this, this slab right here, uh, we're, we need to decorate. So we're going to prep it to do that. Now, you can see it's pretty aggressive, pretty aggressive texture, okay? And you can see that water soaks in and dissipates fairly quickly. However, it's still important to break the cream of this concrete surface. What that breaking of the cream is going to do is it's going to allow water-based stains to properly penetrate, uh, your, your sem coat and your freestyle to properly adhere to the concrete. It's not just enough to have a rough surface. It has to be a properly profiled surface. Now, anytime I go to acid etch a surface, I have to want, I have to mist the surface with water. Okay? What that's going to do is it's going to further dilute the acid a little bit so it's still not so strong. 
The other thing that it's going to do is it's going to allow for a nice even application of the acid stain. If I go and I dump acid out on dry concrete, it's going to spread out and it's going to start reacting immediately. Okay? And so if I, if I don't have any water on the surface, it's going to create tension and it's going to stop that acid and you're going to see all the fingers of where that acid's been poured out. Okay? So if you're doing a stain, you're going to end up actually seeing all of that acid where it hit immediately as opposed to if I have a watered down surface that there's less surface tension and that acid's going to flow out a whole lot nicer. So I wet the surface down. I'm going to take my acid solution. And you can see that product working. It's fizzing and fizzing. Now you can see on these sealed surfaces that acid does nothing. But on the open concrete, it's going to burn the skin just the way we need it to. It's going to open up the pores. And we're going to get a good bite with whatever we put down over this concrete surface. Now you want to be careful when you're acid etching to protect any plant life that's around the project. And notice, I'm walking right through this acid. If I've got grass right here, you don't want to walk in that grass after you put acid down and you get it on your feet. It'll kill the grass. Another important thing is to make sure that you don't let acid, your acid solution, dry on the surface. It can leave, leave salts on the surface that can cause debonding. So you want to make sure that you keep your acid wet and get it neutralized before it dries. Don't let it dry on the surface. You can see that acid's really stopped uh, fizzing. Now we're going to take our, our baking soda solution. You can see how that whites up. It's neutralizing that acid. And neutralizing that surface again. Now we'll rinse the surface off and then we'll be ready to pressure wash. This is another tool that's absolutely mandatory for anybody who does stains or overlays or concrete work in general. Okay? Pressure washers are, are a very important tool. They can clean just about anything. Okay? So when you look at doing a pressure washer, especially if you're looking at doing uh, concrete overlays, you have to have something that's got a lot of strength to it. This, this particular pressure washer, 3600 PSI at 4 gallons a minute. We recommend a minimum of 3,000 PSI at 4 gallons a minute. When you're pressure washing, it's important to use a fan type tip. Okay? If you use another tip, like this zero tip, you don't want to use that. You're not going to be able to effectively clean this way. So don't use this tip. Bugs. Um, Always use this 40 degree tip or my favorite is the turbo tip. When you're pressure washing, you got to get down on the concrete. You can't sit up here and expect to get the concrete clean. You got to be down on there. 